Good afternoon. We welcome each of you to St. Peter's, uh, and for all who are viewing, we pray the Lord's richest blessings upon you. Really give thanks. If you think about last year at this time, uh, we were not able to be in person. So to be with you in God's house, worshiping our great and gracious God together is, is wonderful, and we give thanks and praise to God for it. Uh, just a couple announcements before we begin our service. Uh, just I was uh, a reminder of our Good Friday services are at 2 and 7. And then there's no Saturday service, of course, but on Sunday we have our services at 6, at 8, and 10.30. And there will be some refreshments at the door that they will be serving on the way out as you go as we celebrate our Lord's victory. Uh, also, I was asked to announce that there will be another presentation for, uh, for an estimate for cup coining. Uh, will be after the, uh, the all boards meeting, which is next Thursday. Uh, after the all boards is 7 o'clock, so somewhere around 7.15, 7.30, and it'll be up here in, uh, in the sanctuary, and all are invited to that. Keep that in your prayers as we look at the many, many uh, projects and many things that God has given us to go forward with. But at this time, would you do me a favor? Would you just rise and turn around and say, uh, say hello in God's peace, offer the peace of God, God's peace with each other. Good to see you and be with you. God's peace be with you, with each of you. Our service is projected on the screen. We sing our opening hymn, which is Your Table I Approach, 628. May God bless our worship. As you're able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceedingly joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. In the upper room, our Lord Jesus gave a new command that his people are to love one another as he loved us. When we look at our lives, we see clear that we have not fulfilled that new command. We know that we are by nature sinful and unclean and realize that we have disobeyed your law, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves and have passed by countless opportunities to be of service in the name of the Lord. 
In his mercy, God has promised his forgiveness to those who repent and turn to him, humbly asking for his grace in Christ Jesus. Let us then make our confession to our God. We confess. O almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I'm heartily sorry for that and sincerely repent of that. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn, When You Woke That Thursday Morning. Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. We pray. O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be evident in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for Monday Thursday is from Exodus chapter 24, beginning with the third verse. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in, the, in basins and half of the blood he threw against the altar then he took the book of the covenant and read it in hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu this, and the 70 of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hands on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm is from Psalm 116, 116. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning with the 16th verse. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, as you're able, I ask that you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to Jesus, where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room finished, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. 
And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as they had been told, had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, He said, I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is the blood, my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated and invite Josiah to come forward as he'll lead us in the children's lesson for today. Thanks, Josiah. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody, and happy Maundy Thursday. Now, does anybody know what the word Maundy means? This is a very difficult question. I'd be surprised if anybody had it. I think Pastor might know it, but <laughs> what does it mean, Pastor? It means command. Maundy means command. Command Thursday? Why would we call it Command Thursday when the readings that we looked at and the picture up there on that shelf and on the altar, uh, they're depicting a meal. And actually, we're going to uh, participate in that meal as well in the Lord's Supper. So what does that have to do with the command? Well, the reason we call it Maundy Thursday, it has to do with part of the conversation that took place between Jesus and the disciples while they were eating their supper. So I think Pastor will probably talk to you a little bit more about what is going on in this meal and the reason that we still do it today. Um, but what happened during this conversation, well, a lot of things happened, actually. Maundy Thursday was a big day. And uh, while they were eating this supper, Jesus talks to his disciples um, about a new command that he has given them. He says, I give you a new command uh, to love one another as I have loved you. And that is why we call it Maundy Thursday. Um, and that, that conversation comes out of the book of John, chapter 13. And he doesn't just tell his disciples that they should love each other as he has loved them, but he also demonstrates this to them. So before their meal even started, 
uh, Jesus, um, he did something kind of unique. So we know that Jesus, he is the God of the universe. He came as the prophet, priest, and king. There is no one who has more authority than him in all of, in anything that exists anywhere. He's the God of the universe. But he washed his disciples' feet before they ate together. And he routinely spent time with sinners and uh, people that were outcasts. So he, this was a, a demonstration of how he loved people and how we should love people too. Just like he says here in this supper, when he says, I give you a new command, love others as I have loved you. So just as Jesus loved people like that, to the point of, of washing his disciples' feet, um, that's how we're supposed to love people too. And so that is the command that we, that we name Maundy Thursday after. Um, but then the next day, we see another example of how Christ loved us and how he has asked us to love other people even. Uh, and we see that in Good Friday uh, at his death on the cross. And that was the ultimate act of love where he gave his life for all of creation. But we will talk more about that tomorrow. But that's what Maundy Thursday means. That's why we call it that. And it is also the day that he instituted the Lord's Supper, which I'm sure we'll learn more about. So why don't we thank God for the love that he has for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for uh, the love that you have given us and for sending Jesus down to, uh, to serve us like he did with the disciples and to ultimately die for us and rise again to give us new life. And all this we pray in your son's holy name. Amen. Thank you. And there is a picture, sorry, I forgot to allude to it, uh, of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Thank you. Thank you, Josiah. We continue with our hymn of the day, Lord Jesus Christ, Life Giving Bread, 625.
God's grace and peace be multiplied unto each of you this day from God our Father and from our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. Our text for on this blessed day on Monday Thursday is from our gospel lesson read a few moments ago from Mark chapter 14. Please join with me in a word of prayer, we pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with us and during this holy week and especially on this holy day that we might ever prepare our hearts only to hear your word but to receive your gifts and your holy supper. We thank you, Jesus, not only for your holy meal, but your precious blood that you did shed on the cross for us and for your resurrection, which we have life now and eternally. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, have you ever been somewhere and when you got there, you wondered whether you really belonged being there in the first place? I'll give me an example. When early in my ministry, I was uh, given the privilege to be able to be and have chapel or a Sunday service on Bald Head Island in North Carolina. Now, I didn't know much about the place before we went. There were some people that were there, and they put my name in, and I was fortunate to be able to go with our family. But when we got there, we found it was a place where, well, we kind of felt like we were out of our league. The, the people that were there were a little bit more of a higher class, a little bit more they had, and kind of we wondered whether or not it was where we fit in, though we enjoyed being there and we were thankful for it. We kind of wondered whether we belonged. Maybe you've had an experience like that before. I was a small town boy and pretty much used to some pretty basic things and not the best. And that was a place that was different and not truly feeling belonging. <laughs> Well, imagine this. Imagine that you go to the mailbox today and you get your mail and you get the usual stuff. You get the credit cards and you get the bills. But then you spot something, something different, something special. An oversized envelope with a wax seal on the flap. There's no return address and you know it's an invitation and it seems to be for something special. So without waiting you get to get in the house, you crack the seal and you open the envelope and inside is an engraved invitation to join the Queen of England for a grand banquet. All expenses are covered. Your travel is first class. Even the clothes for the event will be provided for you. All you need to do is show up. A few hours later you find yourself you're on a plane first class across the Atlantic. And when you arrive, you're brought to a luxury suite in a hotel where you have a little bit of downtime to prepare for the special event. You're a little unsure, but you quick check again the invitation confirms that yes, this is indeed your name and address. So it must actually be for you. You follow the instructions that were given explaining where to go and where to sit at the table. And as you enter, you're surprised to find that you're not the only guest. The hostess has invited many people from all walks of life to come, and everyone gathers around the table to take their seats. Small conversations happen, pop up as people get to know one another, and common interests are discovered. There's great joy being at this event at the banquet hall. Everyone here admires the queen and is overjoyed to be in the presence, in her presence. Things are going well, and all are made to feel that they are part of the group. But then as the night goes on, arguments pop up here and there along the way, petty things. And you look around at the gathering and you think to yourself, you begin to wonder whether you belong here in the first place or not. The meal is so superb. The environment is so luxurious. You doubt if this could 
possibly meant for you. What in the world could you do have deserved to be invited and given such a gift to be there? Well, now that you and I have that in mind, that scene, let's shift to today that we remember in our gospel reading the text. Invitation isn't coming from the Queen of England. It's from someone far more important, someone greater. The invitation that you and I receive comes from, actually, from our Lord Jesus Christ to come unto him and to his banquet, from the Lord and God himself, the one who, by whom all things were made, including you and me. And the location is in a ritzy palace in Great Britain. It's in a sanctuary like this here in church. Or perhaps at times it's at a home as the pastor comes to see you or in an institution where you're invited to partake. And the group of people who have all been invited is, well, everyone around you, fellow members of the congregation of God's people, but also visitors from afar come who hold the same faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, including the whole host of heaven and earth are included, who come together in a foretaste of the feast that will come, the great feast. Today we're here together in response to an invitation that God has extended to return to the table of our Lord, to come unto him, to return to the fellowship that you are part of the members of the body of Christ, to return to the joyous communion that we share with one another in faith. In fact, Christ extends that invitation again and again to come unto him in worship, in his word, and in his holy supper. And as he draws you to the table to feed you and strengthen you and me and nourish us, your faith and mine, we come. It's a joyous feast, isn't it? But it doesn't take long to recognize for you and for me that we are marred by sin. We are the chosen of God, but we also possess our human nature that affects everything. And yes, as Josiah was saying, one of the commands, love your neighbor as yourself, we know we have not fulfilled and we have not loved the Lord our God as we should. Daily, all of us, including myself, sin much and have broken the bond of fellowship that we created, God created that we might enjoy with him, including times in which we put other things far in front of him in our hearts and our lives. The love of things and people before our Lord and God. And that sin, too, has broken our fellowship with one another, with others around us, and it has caused strife and factions and disunity, as it did in the church before it does in the world and in its church today, throughout. And you and I may at times wonder whether we even belong here. Why would God allow me to be here in his presence and of his people? At the Last Supper, Jesus revealed that one of his disciples would betray him. And it rippled through the whole group. Is it I, Lord? Each wondered in turn. Am I the one who messed up like that? And when we come right down to it, we realize deep down that every sin you and I commit is actually a betrayal against our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we wonder and doubt at times. But Christ draws us unto himself. And he serves the banquet all the same, doesn't he? For us sinful human beings. He offers not just a rich feast of food and well-aged wine, as Isaiah speaks, no, it's much more than that. He offers you his very own body and blood in with and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins, all of them, and the strengthening of our faith and the assurance of life everlasting through Jesus. The meal takes away our sins, yours and mine, and our faults, 
And at the same time, it binds us together most closely with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And more important, it binds us with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This meal covers our sins and it strengthens our faith and nourishes our body to serve God and to serve our neighbor in thankfulness to him. You know, you think of a blood transfusion. And a blood transfusion offers new life and energy to a person who is anemic and weak. When we in faith are anemic in faith, we receive his bread and his body, and the Holy Spirit transfuses us. He energizes, he strengthens us, he gives us his grace, giving us new life and spiritual energy. The transfusion of Christ's body and blood fills us with power from on high, from God, just as a blood transfusion saves life. So the blood of Christ bestows forgiveness of our sins and life and salvation through him. And we belong here, you and I, not of ourselves, but because Christ has won for us a seat at the table and made us part of his kingdom by his cross and empty tomb for us and for all people. And our baptism, in a sense, has personalized the invitation. And Christ's death and resurrection is the wax and the seal that authenticates it. No one can claim that we do not belong because our seat is guaranteed in Jesus and through him alone. He's promised it, and all his promises are trustworthy and true. We rejoice this day and always in all that Christ gives us in this meal that we share. We give thanks for his grace that invites us to the table, joins us in fellowship with one another, removes our sins, and strengthens and nourishes us for service to him. And as amazing as this meal is, never forget that this is a merely a foretaste of what God has in store for us when he comes. This feast will one day share when all of God's people come together for the wedding feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. We live in a time of now but not yet, a time when we receive benefits and the gifts that God has won for us in Jesus today, right now. But also we know that we will experience what we experience will not hold a candle to what it will be on the last day. Today's gifts sustain us and build us up in confidence and look forward to the feast that will come. And then we're empowered to go back into the world rejoicing in our fellowship with Christ and with one another. We're filled with love that overflows for our brothers and sisters and for others. We're concerned about those who are not of the faith and do not have the hope of our Lord. We proclaim by his power, love through our words, through our attitudes, our actions, and inviting others to share that blessed hope that is ours in Jesus. One Lord, one faith and one baptism, and one God and Father of all that others may too know it and receive it as well in faith. And after we share the blessings which flow from the body and blood of our Lord and the bread and wine, we go forth strengthened that he will sustain us in every time and in every need. Our Lord will keep us steadfast in the faith no matter what until the day when we will be welcome guests at heaven's high holy feast. May we return to the table and rejoice in the gift of his holy supper, which we share today together and hold to fast to the promise of the full feast to come. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. At this time, I invite you to rise as we continue with the prayers of the church projected on the screen for you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of spirit and the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the educational institutions of our synod, for our preschools and our day schools, especially the one that you've given us, and our high schools, and our colleges, universities, and for our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who partake this day of Christ's holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life and have a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who serve in their occupations, professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or underemployment, that God's mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving. From the bounty the Lord provides to support the church and to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are sick or in need of your care, blessing, and strength, that according to his will, God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who mourn, that in their time of sorrow, they would not lose hope, but rely on God's promise that he will never leave them or forsake them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who rejoice in rich blessings of God, that they may always remember the giver of every gift and give him heartful thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the suffering and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation, rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead. We draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to us, for, for to you alone, we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We sing our offertory verse, and the offering is brought forward.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he's betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he gave given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is New Testament of my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated for the hymns of distribution.
now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may it strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting, departing his peace with great joy. Amen. As you're able, we rise as we pray together our post-communion collect. We pray together. We give thanks to you, gracious God, for having received us as guests at your table. We pray that you would guide us at all times and in all places so that we may pass our earthly days in peace, assured of your guidance and knowing of your pardon. By the power of the Holy Spirit, rule our hearts and minds that we may serve you constantly. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, our Father in heaven, his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Jesus Comes Today with Healing, 620. blessed afternoon to each of you. Just a reminder, tomorrow the service is at 2 and 7. Uh, no Saturday service, and then we have the three services on Sunday at 6, 8, and 10.30. The Lord's richest blessings upon your day and week for you.